Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today I'm going to take a crack at answering a very, very common beginner question. I see it all the time on forums and stuff. And the question is, why is strumming so hard? And the easy answer is, you must be doing it wrong. Strumming is a weird thing because actually it is very, very simple. The trick, if you want to call it a trick, is that the hand keeps moving consistently all the time. Now, there are, of course, caveats here. If you get really into fancy fun guitar or there's other advanced techniques that you can use where strumming does become very difficult or something you've got to do a lot of work on and where that consistent movement is abandoned. But nearly everyone strums the same way. When it comes to like basic strumming, they keep the hand moving consistently. It's a bit weird because in guitar land, most people do things that are a little different, like the way they finger the different chords can be very different. James Taylor, great example, one of the finest acoustic guitar players of all time, plays the D chord and A chord in ways that's like most people don't do it that way. And that's fine because it's about music. It's about expression. It's about feeling. But when you watch people strum, and I definitely recommend this as something to do, is to go and watch a whole bunch of guitar players strum the guitar. Just watch some live videos. A good trick is to turn the sound off. So you're just looking at their strumming hand. And they'll be doing it evenly nearly all the time. There's some great examples, guys like Neil Young. Even if he's just strumming once in a bar, he still keeps his hand moving. So he'll go like... Always the hand is moving, and most people will do that. He's kind of obvious in the, the motions are quite big. Some people are just, the movements might be very small and you might not notice them, but nearly everyone strums that way. A couple of exceptions, one that I notice uh, that I've seen up close a few times and it still baffles me is Ron Wood from the Rolling Stones or the Faces. He seems to do all sorts of random picking directions and it, it still it works amazingly. I've got a feeling it might be one of the reasons that makes the Stones rhythm stuff so interesting is that Keith is pretty consistent with his strumming motion and Ronnie's the opposite. So that may be one of those things that kind of gels in a real beautiful way. But for most people, and especially beginners, you want to start off by working on a consistent hand motion. Now, if you're doing my beginner's course, you will have learned it that way anyway. We start off with just doing a down strum on beat one, then we move it to two down strums on beat one and three, then four beats to the bar strumming down on one, two, three, and four, and then upstrokes on the ands. And that is the foundation. You definitely want to get solid with that. If you've learned wrongly, if you've learned in a different way or you've found it a real struggle, I would recommend going back to doing that real simple, just four down strums to the beat, one, two, three, four. Getting used to this consistent movement of the hand. If you can do it with a metronome, great, but you don't have to think about that. Ideally, you want to be tapping your foot on the beat as well. So just getting used to this feeling of the down strums on one, two, three, Four. That's, you definitely need to get that kind of soundly grounded for your playing. That's, if you can't do that, even without thinking about it, then you know, you're going to struggle a bit. So that will be the first thing to think about. Now, in between each of those downs is an up. And I could add them in now. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And... The truth is, no matter what the pattern is here, I'm going to keep that hand moving consistently and it'll work. If I go one and two, three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two, three and four, or down, down, up, up, down, which is the most common strumming pattern there is. Down, down, up, up, down. But you can see, if I stop strumming, my hand is actually moving still exactly the same way. Whether I'm going down, down, up, up, down, down. You can get as crazy as you like with the patterns. It doesn't matter. If you keep the hand consistent, it feel, it's, a, it's a bit like dancing. You're kind of in the groove. There's something moving around that's it's got it going on. And you can relax into it because it's consistent. You don't have to think about it. It's just going. Now, relaxing and making it feel good 
is one of the most important parts for beginners. Once you can actually do the mechanics, if you're still feeling it struggling a bit, it's probably because you're very tense and you've got to learn to relax and to make a pattern feel good. So I definitely recommend for anyone who's struggling with that kind of thing is just sitting down, playing the same pattern over again and focusing on making it feel nice. We know music is a language, but it's not a spoken language. I think people feel how you feel when you perform. So if you're really tense and it's all you're kind of fighting it, when people listen to you, they're going to feel that too. And that's not nice. That's not a nice thing to have to feel, to listen to, to absorb that feeling. Ain't right. You want people to feel relaxed. So you even and a really nice thing to do is just mute all the strings so you're not actually playing a chord because that can be a bit distracting. Just thinking now about let's take that down down up up down pattern i call it old faithful up up down one two and three and four and then just think about trying to make it feel good it's the only thing i'm thinking about is just relaxing and trying to get it like a so it's feeling comfortable to me and you know Now, a couple of times already I've put extra strums in, but I've probably, you, well, you might have noticed, but it doesn't matter. It definitely doesn't ruin anything. If you change the rhythm, if you go like that, it sounds really wonky straight away, doesn't it? As soon as you've got a groove on, if, it, if you stop moving or it goes like, well, well, it's weird. You've got to remember that rhythm has been something that's been in our species for thousands of years. Aboriginals clicking sticks together and dancing, right? That's the earliest that I'm aware of anyway, of, of musical form. The, the rhythm, the groove is inside us. Our Western harmony, the chords and stuff, only a few hundred years. So if you're going to get the chords wrong, it matters a lot less than if you get the rhythm wrong. So rhythm really is something that you want to think about. Um, if I take that pattern, for example, that down, down, up, up, down pattern, and instead of doing two ups in a row, I try and keep the pattern alternating. So uh, one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. <laughs> oh. It's just really, it feels awful. I'm having to really concentrate and it doesn't feel nice. A little bit of it is what we're used to as well. There's a lot of different elements here, but we're used to hearing those bass strings on the beat and the up strokes in between. This sound, the sound of a down strum and the sound of an up strum is different. So we're used to hearing not... It just, it just sounds weird. It doesn't fit with what we're used to hearing because everybody pretty much strums the same way. It gets faster, of course. Okay, so if you're going to do funk strumming, we instead of dividing a bar, a bar into eight, we divide it into 16. So we have this one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and... So there's more movement, and I guess you could say that's harder. But again, that's not the thing that we're talking about for beginners. We're talking just most people, when they ask that question, they're struggling with something to do with the direction of the pick and whether it should be a down and whether it should be an up. So if you're that person, you're really struggling with that, even if you're a more experienced guitar player, I would recommend that you head back over to my website, check out the beginner's course and watch all of the strumming lessons from every lesson in my beginner's course. Okay, so each lesson has a strumming element to it. So I'd recommend that you go through and watch all of those things and make sure that you're not missing something. Pick some of the patterns that you feel connected to because we all connect a little bit to different patterns. That one, Old Faithful, is so common, like unbelievably common uh, strumming pattern. That would be a good one to work on. So I'd recommend taking it, practicing it, seeing if there's something that's going wrong because just one other thing I should mention as well is things like holding the pick too hard can make things go really wonky. Using a thick pick can make things go wonky. So you definitely want to be using a thin pick, not grabbing it too hard. And I mean, if you're a beginner, you should be using a paper thin pick, the thinnest that you can get. Jim Dunlop nylons, the white one, whatever that 
I'm not sure what exactly the thickness is. Really thin. You shouldn't be holding it too hard because if you hold it too hard, you're going to create tension in your arm and that's going to stop you relaxing. So you want to feel it nice and loose and relaxed. You want to be at least aware that on the down strums, you're going to be hitting mostly the thicker strings, probably hit all of them, but you're definitely going to be hitting the thicker strings. Whereas on an upstroke, it's a little bit more kind of away from the guitar and you're more likely to hit just the thinner strings and not be hitting the bass strings so much. There are times where you will hit all of the strings on every down and every up, especially doing this kind of... In that sort of instance, I'm hitting all of the strums, all of the strings with each strum. So there's not really one set answer here, but I'm trying to give you as many of the common problems that I can think of, and hopefully this will be enough to uh, get you through I'm reluctant to say that there are rules in strumming, but there are definitely really common ways that nearly everyone does it because it's easier and generally sounds better. And that's the consistent motion. Now, if you've learned to play by the rules and you're con confident and consistent with that kind of strumming, when you encounter something that breaks the rules, a double time splang, I call it, uh, this sort of thing where you have a... There's a little da -da -da where you're putting a down strum where an up strum would usually be. The trick with being able to do those things is being able to get back to the consistent pattern afterwards. Right? That's It's not actually hard to do it. It's hard to get back into the consistency, suddenly change into this thing and then back again. Particularly with funk when you get into doing so, adding some triplets into a 16th note, that kind of thing. There are things that are difficult and they take practice. But if you try and get into those things before you're consistent with the hand motion you're going to really struggle one last thing i should mention is whether you use a pick or not now i would recommend for most people that you learn to strum using a pick but you don't have to there are many examples of fantastic guitar players mark Knopfler, jeff beck james taylor whatever that strum without a pick and it sounds amazing if you're going to strum without a pick you can just use the, the thumb and you can hear straight away a lot rounder sound which can be nice if you like that sound you might want to start practicing without a pick because it is a little tamer if you don't if you've got to practice at night without waking the kids up you might want to experiment with using your thumb you can also use your finger your first finger you get a little bit more zing there from the nail of it on a down stroke with the first finger and then it's a bit quieter on the up stroke some people use a thumb down and a finger up that's fine as well. There's not really a set rule when it comes to the finger style thing. There's a lot of choices as to which one you're going to use. One thing that I do sometimes if I'm playing acoustic guitar is I hold my thumb and my first finger together like I'm holding a pick and strum. And that seems to be quite an effective way. It seems to create a little bit more tension in the fingers so you can get a little bit more positive contact with the string. Sounds a little bit more like I'm using a pick. But it doesn't matter. It's completely up to you whether you choose to use a pick or not. I think it's easier for most people to start with a pick and then move to not using a pick later. But some people have exactly the opposite and that's okay. Figure out the one that works best for you. We are all individual after all. If you're over on YouTube, I really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so you're notified when I've got new lessons coming out. Don't forget to slap the like and let me know in the comments about any more questions you've got on strumming or other things. If there's a question that's really been irking you, let me know in the comments. I'll see if I can't get to it. Remember the beginner's course over on Just a Guitar, completely free, still amazing practice assistant to help you stay on track and all of that sort of stuff. So head on over there. There'll be links in the description. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You'll take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.